worship is designed to give glory to God for sharing the story of the passion of Jesus Christ through the words of Luke's gospel. And we pray that we will all experience the powerful truth of God's word as we worship the Lord together. We invite everyone to use the tear-off section of the bulletin to let us know that you're here. We extend a special welcome to all the guests that are here. We ask that uh, you fill out as much information as you're comfortable in sharing. Uh, you can also use the tear-off section to sign up for our Wednesday night meal. Uh, also pass along any joys or concerns that you have to the church office. Uh, I invite you to see the Holy Week schedule that's in your bulletin as well and to take part in the special services that we have this week. Uh, and also look for other opportunities that we have going on here at the church. Uh, one of those is our Relay for Life bake sale, which is downstairs in the fellowship hall. So if uh, you're interested, please go down there and take a look at some of the fine wares that we have. Uh, so you might walk away with some, some dessert for today. Uh, tonight, we have a choir fest for Real Foot Rural Ministries that will be at Reedland United Methodist Church. Uh, I think we have a bus going tonight, is that right? Uh, I think it leaves at 515? Okay. So if anybody's interested in going over to Reedland Methodist Church tonight for, uh, for that concert, uh, you can be here at the church by 515 to, uh, to get a ride. Also, we have our uh, Maundy Thursday service that will be taking place here at the church at 630. And of course, next Sunday is obviously the big day. So we invite you to ask friends and family members to come and uh, celebrate with us. Uh, another note before we uh, start off in prayer, some of our children are going to be uh, proceeding down and uh, they'll be waving their palm fronds um, and uh, during the anthem here in a little bit. So as they do, all of the younger children are then dismissed to Children's Church at that time. Uh, so will you please join me in prayer? Holy God, we praise your name and welcome your spirit to lead and guide us this morning. May all that we say and do bring glory and honor to your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Amen.
going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, that now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you.
this your day you have known the path for peace that you have failed to see. The days will come when your enemies will run past to surround you and hem you in, pressing hard from every side. And within these walls they will destroy you. You and your children. And they will not leave one stone on another in you because you did not recognize the time of your visitation. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owners, The teacher says, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared for the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until the Ithah finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And after taking the cup, he said thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink it again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup new in my covenant, which is poured out for you. But by the hand of man who is going to betray me is with mine at this table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to the man who betrays me. They began to question among themselves which of them might be who would do this. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you feel as blessed as I do to be here this day. It's always good to be in the house of God with the people of God. Amen? Amen. And we have so much to be thankful for. There are always things about which we are concerned, but our blessings so far outweigh all of those things which try us from day to day. Especially in this time of year when we pause for just a moment and we celebrate 
celebrate the life of Jesus. This, this week especially as we look back on those things that he underwent during that last week of his life. And, and in so many ways we, we should expect to participate in them and be part of Jesus during this week. I invite you to do that. I invite you to, to take a little time each day and consider what may have been happening in Jesus' life and remember that he did it all for us. Of course, this is also a time of giving and in the Methodist love to give. Ho, ho. I, I, I will tell you, one of, the, one of the things that I've always used, I, I, I tell people, you know, you don't necessarily have to give until it hurts. But you ought to give until you notice. <laughs> well, we value those things in which we have an investment, yes? And this is part of your investment. It's not just in dollars. Of course, we have to have those to have this place, to, to carry on the things we do, to do all the programs that this congregation does, to have the outreach that we do, and that's our mission. We have to have those things to do the mission, but more importantly is the other mission, and that's the mission that each one of us has each and every day, and that is to be the people that Jesus calls us to be. And he gives us that opportunity. It's a gift that he gives us every day. And the promise of that is that if we give what we can and we do what we can and we do the best that we possibly can, we've got a great reward waiting for us. Jesus gave himself up, gave us our salvation so that we have the hope of heaven. And that's what he gave. That's what God gave him. We cannot outgive God no matter what we do. But we need to give it a good shot sometimes. We need to be thankful for all of us who are here, and we need to be in prayer for those who are not. And there may be special prayers that need to be raised this day for some. We know that we have some who are ill, some who are grieving. There are those who are troubled, and whatever it may be, we need to be in special in special recognition of those things now. And take just, just a moment. You can double task here. Just think of those people for whom you need to pray. And if you can't think of anybody else to pray for, pray for yourself. Because we all need to do that as well. Let us pray. Holy and merciful Heavenly Father, we come to you with our thanks and our praise. You give us so much, and we sometimes return so little that we wonder often how you continue to love us as you do. But we know that you do, and for that we give you our eternal thanks. We thank you for this time of celebration when we, we come this week and we, we think of Jesus last week. And we think of the sacrifice that you, dear God, made on our behalf through him so that we might be here as your people today. Help us be cognizant of all those blessings that we have, those which we see and those which we do not. And help us to understand that we will be really blessed when we bless others, that it is in giving that we receive the most. Be with us in our frailty. Be with us when we fail. Be with us when we question. And in all things, give us your peace. Come now and be with us as we bring to you our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Help us to take these gifts and use them in your name to do your work in this world so that others may also be blessed. Be with us while we worship and let us Continue to lift our hearts, open our souls, hear the sounds of heaven, listen to the story, know the story, live the story, and pass the story along. Keep us always in your care. Keep us in love with you and in love with each other. We ask in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he who gave us everything.
miel.
among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not, like, not to be like them. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. He said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. It is written, He was numbered with the transgressors. And I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Yes, what is written about me is reaching its fulfillment. The disciples said, See, Lord, here are two swords. That is enough, he replied. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation." He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep. Exhausted from sorrow, he said, Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation.
was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who called Judas, one of the twelve, was with them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you portraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike out with our swords? And one of them struck a servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers, the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts, and you did not lay hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophesy! Who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. Then they said, 
Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Then the whole assembly arose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be the Christ, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teachings. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased. For a long time, he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Harold and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Harold and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. If you are able, please rise to honor the sacrifice of Jesus. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. With one voice, they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for them. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? 
Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise.
It's easy for things to get complicated. But the story that we've heard today is really very simple. God loves us. He loves us enough that he sent Jesus to die in our place so that we might live. Where is your life in Jesus today? There may be those who never accepted Jesus as their Savior. You may have done that some time ago and kind of forgotten what that promise means. You may need to come down here and pray. We all need that. If you can't think of anybody else to pray, pray for me and pray for you. There may be those who simply need to join this fellowship. Whatever your needs may be today, give them to Jesus. Bring them down here. Go away from here, clear, clean, pure, whole, as Jesus would have us to do. Amen? If you would now, please stand for the closing song. Benediction. Heavenly Father, send us forth today in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus. Help us this week and throughout our lives to live a life that reflects our gratitude. You gave yourself for us. Send us out to live for you and to give ourselves for you. In Jesus' name, amen.